We're going to be issuing an emergency order of prohibition to ground all flights of the 737 MAX 8 and the 737 MAX 9 and planes associated with that line. After several days in which the U.S. was increasingly isolated and allowing Boeing 737 MAX aircraft to fly, the Trump administration today finally acceded to growing international consensus and ordered the planes grounded. This comes after two deadly crashes and, as reported yesterday, complaints to the federal government from pilots who found the plane's nose suddenly tipping down dangerously after engaging the autopilot. So, why was the U.S. the international laggard on this issue of air safety when it has for so long been an international leader? It's hard to say, but what we do know is Boeing gave the president's inaugural committee $1 million, an inaugural committee now under investigation from the Southern District of New York. The company's CEO has also traveled to the president's private for-profit club to schmooze, a place that's basically a petri dish of improper influence. And we know the company CEO spoke with the president on the phone yesterday. And so when it comes to the decision making process, both to keep the planes in the air and now to ground them, life and death matters to be sure, it would be nice to have faith the decision was made on the merits. But part of what's so insidious and toxic about the ubiquitous corruption of this administration is that, of course, we can have no such faith. We do not know if Donald Trump's decisions are made because of improper influence or expert recommendation or some cockamamie idea implanted in his brain while kibitzing at the Mar-a-Lago omelet bar. Members of Congress generally welcome the president's decision to ground the planes, though Senator Richard Blumenthal tweeted in part, quote, this step is right, but unacceptably overdue. Our nation should be leading, not lagging in air safety. And Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat from Connecticut, joins me now. Why was this a, you were quite outspoken and vocal about this. Why was this such a point of focus for you? It's a point of focus because it is part of the dysfunctional Washington, so impacted by special interests and influence. It's part of the Trump MO, modus, modus operandi, which reacts to potentially those kinds of special interests. All the facts that you've just described are highly suspect and add to it the fact that this decision was apparently based on facts still undisclosed to the American people because they say they have new evidence. Well, the rest of the world grounded these airplanes based on evidence well known before now. And among the most chilling of those facts, and Rachel Maddow did such a dramatic job last night of describing them, are the pilots' reports. Today, I asked the NASA head, Jim Bridenstine, to provide all of those pilot reports, which are in the possession of NASA, to me. And he agreed to do so because the indications far back as November of this problem are disconcerting, to say the least. Um, there's, there's a question uh, about what this does, the American air system, and the general sort of oversight of the Trump administration on air safety. Um, there's, there's been a dramatic drop in enforcement fines from major U.S. airlines in the last two years, 88% drop, which is really pretty uh, remarkable. Are you confident in an FAA with full acting uh, positions and this administration over, overseeing airline safety at this moment? I am entirely unconfident in the FAA, which is why I've called for hearings before Congress, bringing the FAA to testify, but also Boeing executives and Secretary Chow, who has supervisory authority over the FAA. At the end of the day, it was Secretary Chow recommending to President Trump that they ground these airplanes. But everyone involved in designing, constructing, approving for flight and continuing in flight has really some accountability to provide. And we need to know who knew what when and why they failed to act. Since I have you here, Senator, there's two business pieces of Senate business I'd like to talk to you about that are in motion today. Something historic happened in the United States Senate. Uh, the Senate voted to pass a war powers resolution uh, ordering the U.S. to end its involvement in the Saudi war in Yemen. The U.S. has been providing all kinds of support to that war, uh, refueling for planes particularly, uh, as well as, as um, s support and training for uh, Saudi fighters. This was a big deal. Um, what does it mean now? 
It means, first of all, that Congress is taking back some of its war powers power, which is to the good. It means, practically speaking, that there should be an end to the equipping and training of Saudi war crimes, very simply the Saudi bombing of civilians, many of them children, and the Saudi interference with humanity aid is causing famine in that country and death and disease. And it means that the United States will no longer be complicit in those war crimes. Now, it still has to be approved by the House, but this is a profoundly important first step. Um, the other big question before your body is the, is the vote that's happening tomorrow. This is on the president's declaration of national emergency. Um, a a one-page resolution ending said national emergency was passed out of the, the House. Uh, it now comes to the Senate. It looks like the no, the, the, the yeas, right, the people who want to end the emergency, who are going to vote for the resolution, had the votes from Republicans. There's been tremendous pressure put on them by the White House. Mike Pence has been over there. What is your sense of where things stand right now? Despite the uh, really overwhelming squeeze exerted by the White House, very transparently so, the votes seem to be holding firm among that handful of Republicans who are necessary to overturn this emergency declaration. Remember, never before in our history, never, has a president clearly usurped Congress's powers. This measure should be bipartisan. The power to spend and appropriate funds is in the Constitution, given only to Congress. Never before has the president spent money after Congress has refused to give him the authority to do so, not just neglected, but refused. And so this kind of vote, I think, is a challenge to the institution. And my Republican colleagues are deeply worried, more than may vote the right way tomorrow, about the precedent that is set here for the president seizing power from the Congress. And eventually, I believe the courts will overturn it regardless of what the Congress does tomorrow. Yeah, that seems likely. There's just been some talk about negotiating some kind of one-time mulligan where this emergency stands, but then they put up some vote, some sh some show vote, which essentially be a show vote to, you know, change the emergency act going forward just to get people to yes. But it sounds like you think they're they're confident the Republican votes are holding. We will see, I think, tomorrow whether that uh, bears out. I I'm not sure where I would place my bet. Senator Blumenthal, thank you so much for taking the time. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.